Hey, it's Will from LearnRater, and in this video I'm going to walk through the 2012 Microeconomics FRQ question number two. This question is related to your understanding of marginal utilities and uh, the last dollar spent idea. So the fact that if I spend a dollar on this good, it should equal the amount that I last spent on another good. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're presented with the question in which Teresa consumes both bagels and toy cars, and we're shown the marginal utility that Teresa gains from consuming bagels and toy cars. So what is her total utility from purchasing three toy cars? So the way that we can compute this is by thinking about what marginal utility means. Marginal utility is the gain from an incremental change in your consumption, and so in other words, if Teresa consumes just one toy car, she gets a marginal utility of 10. If she consumes two, she would get 10 plus 8, or 18. If she were to consume three, she gets 10 plus 8 plus 6. And therefore, that is the answer to part one. Essentially, we need to sum the amount of marginal utility she gains from each successive unit um, of toy car that she purchases. And therefore, we have 10 plus 8 plus 6, which is going to equal 24. And the second thing that we need to think about is that she has a weekly income and the price per bagel is $2 and the price of her toy car is $1. So what quantity of bagels and toy cars will maximize her utility if she spends her entire weekly income on these two goods? So we need to explain our answer using marginal analysis. So marginal analysis is essentially uh, where you want to use the marginal utility to price ratio or the MUP to P ratio. So the idea behind this is that essentially we need to find where the marginal utility of bagel over the price of a bagel equals the marginal utility of a toy car to the price of a toy car. In other words, the last dollar I spent on the bagel gives me as much utility in a proportion to the last dollar I spent on a toy car. So that again makes sense because we want to reach the point in which um, it's almost like a level of indifference in which uh, the last dollar I spent on one good is just as much as I uh, as much utils or happiness that I got from the other good. So let's think about this. Let's let's break down what the MUPs for both of these people are. So MUP, we're going to say that this is of bagels, and then on the right hand side I'm going to do the marginal utility price ratio of toy cars. So the way that you can compute this is just by dividing the marginal utility by the price. We're given that the price of bagels is equal to 2 and that the price of toy cars is equal to 1. So let's do toy cars first since it's super easy. So the first one if we have this graph we know that 10 divided by 1 is going to be 10, 8 divided by 1 is 8, and so forth. So that's going to be 10, 8, 6, 4, 3, 2. And then now let's think about the bagel marginal utility to price ratio. In this case we have 8, so 8 divided by 2 is 4. Just to make sure you understand the uh, math that I'm computing here. I'm essentially taking the marginal utility to price ratio and I'm taking that divided by 2 since I'm given that the price is equal to 2 and so forth. So knowing that I have 4, 3.5, 3, 2.5, 2, and 1.5. And what I essentially want to find is where the last dollar I spent on bagels brings me as much utility in an equal proportion to the last dollar I spent on toy cars. So I want to see where these two are going to equal one another. And so looking at this, that happens at only one point, or really, well, it doesn't happen just at one point, but it happens in one point that's feasible. But we can identify both of those points. So first we have a situation in which the MUP ratio is equal to 3 for both of them and the second circumstance would be where they're both equal to 2 but we are also given that the weekly income is eleven dollars and therefore if you were to think about this first case there's no way that you can purchase five bagels and six toy cars 
because that would cost us 5 times 2, which is $10, plus $6, since the price of a toy car is 1, and that's 16, which is greater than 11, so that can't be an option. And therefore, we need to check the other point in which MUB PB equals MUPTC, which is at 3. So if we do 3 bagels and 5 toy cars, we know that Teresa would spend 3 times 2, which is $6, plus $5, which is a perfect $11. And therefore, the optimal is going to be where Teresa purchases three bagels and five toy cars. So again, to make sure that you understand that intuition, we essentially want to find where the last dollar Teresa spent on a bagel equals the amount of utility that uh, she derives from the last dollar spent on a toy car. So we need to essentially find the marginal utility to price ratio, see where they're equal to one another, and then test what's actually feasible. In this case, we were given that the income was eleven dollars and therefore the actual pricing needs to make sense so in this case the first case that we tested the five bagels and six toy cars didn't make sense because sixteen dollars is greater than eleven dollars alright so moving on to part B we're asked about how the price of wheat and input for the production of bagels increases and how that influences Teresa's demand so in this case the price of wheat is an influencer of supply since it's an input, and therefore we'll ch see a change in supply, but we will not see a change in demand. So that makes sense because you know the change in price of wheat is going to be an, an a influencer for the producer of bagels, but it doesn't influence the consumer's demand for those bagels. Therefore, there would be no change in Teresa's demand for bagels. Moving on to part C, we know that the income elasticity for bagels is negative 0.2. Does the value of Teresa's income elasticity indicate that they're normal, inferior, substitutes, or complements? So in this case, uh, we need to think about what income elasticity means. That is a percent change in demand versus a percent change in income. So in this case, we have a negative income elasticity, and therefore, if I were to experience an increase in income, I would experience a decrease in demand. And this pretty much gives us our answer. So if we think about this, what's happening is as we become wealthier and experience higher levels of income, we are experiencing a downward shift in the demand for bagels. Therefore, we're faced with an inferior good. And this makes sense because you can think about the contrary point of that, which would be if it were a normal good, we would experience an increase in demand with an increase in income. So this would be the normal situation because what's happening is if I, the consumer, feel like I am experiencing a higher level of wealth, then I want to consume even more of that good. That shows uh, the market, that shows us that the market is um, for a good that is normal because as I get wealthier I want to buy more of it versus this case for bagels in which we're faced with a negative market which is uh, interesting because it shows us that as our incomes increase, our demand actually decreases for the good. Therefore, it's inferior. Part D. Suppose that the price of toy cars increases by 10%. Teresa buys 5% fewer toy cars and 4% less of a different toy blocks. Calculate the cross-price elasticity for toy cars and blocks and indicate if it's positive or negative. So here, we need to think about the cross-price elasticity. So in other words, what is the influence of a change in the price of cars on, a, uh, on the quantity of blocks? And what we know is that the price of toy cars has gone up 10%. And we know that the the price uh, or the quantity of blocks goes down four percent for every five percent. So therefore, we see four percent here. It's going down, and as a result, we see negative point four 
as our cross price elasticity. This is a negative value. So just to make sure that you understand what this conclusion is saying, it's saying that if I were to raise the price of cars, we would experience not only a decrease in the quantity of toy cars that are sold, but also a decrease in the quantity of blocks sold. So what that shows us is that there's some sort of interaction going on with cars and blocks. They may be complements to each other because um, we've seen that with an increase in the price of toy cars, there's an influence on not only cars, but also on blocks, and it's a negative influence. So that pretty much covers it for question two. As always, if you need extra help, feel free to check out LearnRainer for hundreds of AP Micro questions. Uh, all of our easy and medium questions are free. And that's it for now. I'll see you guys next time.